Howdy, y'all. Caleb here. The new FAQ is here. Finally. Finally, it got released. And it's actually some good news for Seraphon. I'm liking this. There's some good. There's some bad. There's some things that are changed that we definitely need to pay attention to. And we're going to get into that here. Um, but it's exciting times. The new FAQ is here. Let's see what they've done to our army. Um, first up, Engine of the Gods. Um, this is always this has been a question a lot in the comments. Um, is does the engine of the gods get the priest keyword? Now we have definitive proof. Yes, it does. So they have said on page ninety five of our of our battle tome, engine of the gods keywords add priest keyword to the keywords section. Now that is huge because we've got this beefy priest now, lots of wounds and. Has a great ability on its own with the Celestial Engine. Usually you're going to be healing something up or you're trying for a summons or doing some mortal wounds. It's got different options. But now it has access to the prayers. And so we've got generic and universal prayers to go with. So we've got Bless, which is a 6-up ward save. Fantastic to put onto the Engine of Gods if you don't have any protection on it already. Smite, which you'll be able to smite the enemy priests. And you know what? Now you're not really that concerned about your priest being smited from across the board. Smite has huge range. It's 48 inches. Um, and a lot of times it'll take out our small priests. But now you have a, a good vessel to smite other priests, and you're not too worried about yours getting smited off the table real quick. Uh, curse, six is to hit equal immortal wound. Now this is that prayer that, that you know, I've kind of been reluctant to take on my skink priest because he it's so small. It's hard to get into combat. Um this curse prayer is nine inches and so it's very difficult to, to make that work in actual play now your engine of the gods i my engine of the gods is is near or in combat quite a bit and so this is going to be an excellent choice to take curse on you take those sixes to hit equal a mortal wound um and you, all of a sudden you know if you're charging in a bunch of stegodons which you know i like to do <laughs> um you're going to be doing a lot of damage. I, I was talking in that last battle report. I need access to mortal wounds uh, in this meta. And this might be that option. You get your engine close, attack with other stuff, attack with the engine, and you're getting mortal wounds. Fantastic ability. And now we have something that we're not afraid to get closer to the enemy to actually get that curse off. Love that. Uh, if you decide to take heal instead, uh, you, you could turn this engine into a absolute tank. So let's say you take uh, the engine in Thunder Lizard, so you get an extra two wounds. So that's 14 wounds. You're minus one damage. Now uh, you're going to be healing D3 from this prayer. You're also probably going to be healing one or two uh, D3 from the Cosmic Engine. Let's throw Amulet of Destiny on there. So now all of a sudden this engine of the gods getting real tanky. Um, so that that's a, that's a great... Uh, getting the Priest Word on this engine is fantastic. Finally, finally, uh, and we kind of always thought it was supposed to be that way, but now it actually does get the priest keyword, so that's fantastic. Guidance, extra command point, you could always take that one if, if you don't really have a lot of command point generation in your army, or you're not taking some of the skink wizards to give you command points, this is a way to get you some command points. So, Engine of the Gods, stock going up even further, <laughs> I mean, 265 points, a fantastic hero option, fits in the battalion regiment if you need that artillery slot to get your drops lower. Same price as a normal Stegodon, all of a sudden now has even more utility. Price didn't go up, fantastic option. Uh, so now not for, for the not so good news, we have Source Sunblood. Uh, the Scent of Weakness, this was an, a unique command ability that the Source Sunblood had in that you would pick an enemy unit, this is on the old one, and you get plus one to your wound rolls by friendly source units to that unit. So you could you could crash in multiple units. You could crash in multiple Carnosaurs. You could do some funny stuff if you were taking like Saurus in, in Starborn where you could teleport this guy in and use that ability if you were charging with a bunch of stuff. Um, but they've changed it now. And now um, the unit that you must, you must apply it to a Saurus unit. And so your source unit actually receives a command point. And why that's a big deal is because uh, you can only apply one command point to a unit per phase from a hero. And so before you could apply this to the enemy and then still apply something to your source unit. Um, now you can't. Now it's a one-off. I think this really hurts the Sunblood's usability. Um, it was already kind of borderline. Source is, is harder to make work. 
And and so I think that just kind of <laughs> somebody at GW does not like Soros. I don't understand it. Uh, Soros is why most of us got into this faction, and just GW just does not like Soros. I don't I don't I don't get it. But uh, probably not unexpected as most command abilities are going this way. You apply it to your units instead of the other units. But well, poor Sunblood. Um, let's talk about some other changes in, in the FAQ. Some of these are big. Some of them aren't that big. Some of them are just kind of nuanced fixes or things that we already kind of figured worked. The first one, though, is about our scaly skin. Does coalesce battle trait scaly skin apply to mortal wounds? So this is the ability for coalesce to minus one damage to attacks that are coming in. And this says no, it does not apply to mortal wounds. Now, this was in our previous in AOS 2.0 FAQ, but they removed it, which was kind of weird. And so for, you know, a few months now, we've been able to uh, take minus one to damage from mortals that were from attacks, not spells and thing, or abilities, but from attacks. Um, so that is no longer the case. Mortal wounds just go straight through. So we're back to how it used to be in AOS 2, which I think is fine. Um, it was kind of nice to, to take minus one off of, off of some mortal wounds from attacks, uh, but that's no longer the case. Um, we got a change to drain magic. This is the one where you dispel everything that wasn't bonded to us. All the endless spells that aren't bonded are dispelled. And so that was just a cleanup of the verbiage. It used to say bound endless spells. Well, they changed that to bonded. So some cleanup of, of the verbiage there. Same spell, pretty hard to cast. Um, I'm not seeing a lot of endless spells these days, but um, maybe that's just my meta. Uh, some other changes. Can you clarify when Burning Head Endless Spell is removed from play due to its Flaming Skull ability? You remove it after rolling for all units within one at the end of its move and allocating all of the mortal wounds caused as a result. And so this is this is nice in that it um, in, uh, Burning Head is one of the cheapest Endless Spells. 20 points, it may be the cheapest. And to be honest, I like it kind of the most. You cast it out there, it's going to be bonded to us, and I'm going to streak it across the field. And this just kind of clarifies that it's not removed until you roll for all the units within one inch. Um, so that's good. So it is kind of a one-off spell. You shoot it across the field, you blow it up, and then it disappears. So that's kind of nice, uh, just to get that clarification. Uh, I think that next one, I just copy and paste, same thing. Um, one of the other ones that kind of goes along with Burning Head is this one. This is a great change here. Um, do all things that increase the range of a caster spell also apply to the distance at which endless spells can be set up from the caster? And the answer is yes. And we kind of knew this because endless spells all say now that they're cast with a spell that has a range. And all our stuff, like the Astralith Banner Bear, the uh, Skink Oracles, or the, the Skink Vassals, they affect the range of the spell. And so we kind of knew that, but this, it's great to have this clarification so that we can tell our opponent yes i'm allowed to set up you know <laughs> shackles from my troglodon or yes i can increase the range of um geminids with the astralith banner bear so that is a great change this is one of those things that that um we really can benefit from with our endless spells if you are bringing endless spells uh think about ways that you can increase that range with the banner bear with your vassals to really make it make them pop off across the field so that's that's great that's great to hear Another change, Flaming Weapon Spell. Can a Flaming Weapon Spell from Universal Spell Lore be used to pick a Mount's Melee Weapon? Yes. And so this could be a little interesting if, you, if you're taking the, you know, uh, Stegodon Chief, making him a wizard, and then casting Flaming Weapon on himself. Now you can apply it to, like, the Stomps, where you get a lot of attacks coming in, where you start with the base five, you'll have six from Prime War Beast, you'll have seven from the Sacred Asterisms, You'll have eight from his <laughs> um, from his command ability. So now you're getting eight attacks, and they're going to be doing three damage each instead of two. And so that can be a, a pretty sneaky pick if if you make him a wizard and put flaming flaming weapon on him. So that could, that could be kind of nice. Um, question: Are unique units allowed to take spells from the universal spell or, or prayers from the universal uh, prayer scripture? No. And so this this kind of goes to some, uh, I think some people are trying to take like Croak with Fleming Weapon. 
And that's a that's a universal spell, so you can't do that with unique characters. So that's kind of a bummer. Um, the unique spells for our for you know Croak, he's our only unique character. You know, weren't really all that impressive. They were kind of a corner case, so it's not that big a deal for Seraphin, I don't think. This one here is causing some problems on on the internet, I think. And so this has to do with your ward saves and your and your you know what we used to call the feel no pain saves. In section fourteen point three of the core rules, ward rolls are made to negate a wound or mortal wound before it is allocated to the model. I highlight these words because that's how they highlighted them in the FAQ. However, many units in the games have abilities that trigger when a wound or mortal wound is allocated to a friendly model. Can I use abilities that negate negate allocated wounds or mortal wounds after a wound uh, after a ward roll? Yes. So you have this is setting up. This is crazy. I mean, there's no reason for this. They should have just labeled everything a ward roll. There's a lot of things that still aren't ward rolls though uh, in the game, and maybe they're going to be updating these as new books come out. But right now we have three different saves. We have and you see them down there. We have an armor save, a ward save. And then an ability save. You know, these saves that, that say when you allocate something, roll and see if you negate it. And so that's interesting in that we do have one of those ability saves. And that's the Astral of Banner Bear. He has a six up area of effect. And it says when you allocate a mortal wound or a wound on a six up, it's negated. And so you can come up with some interesting things here. You, like I have for an example here at Engine of the God takes the uh, amulet and is within range of the Astral of Bear. So you would have basically a four up, a five up, and then a six up save. And so there's nothing in the core rules that says uh, you can't stack an ability save on a ward save. In fact, they've just said that you can. You can't stack ward saves on top of each other, but now you can have this, this weird ability save that also goes on after a ward save. You can do the same thing if you're just doing a prayer. If you're not taking the amulet, or let's say you have the amulet on something else, let's say you have that bless um, prayer on the engine, so that's a six up, and you're within range of the astrolith, that's another six up. And so you could you could have you can stack some some odd little combos here in Seraphin. It's not as big of a deal with us because because really I think the astrolith may be our only ability that's not a ward save. Um, and so we used to have some other ones. Croak used to have one, but it, his his war scroll's been changed. Um, I can't think of any others. The chameleons actually do have a ward save now, so that won't that won't affect them. I'll, I mean, I guess you could give them an actual banner bear save too. But uh, I think that means that the stock for the astralith banner bear has gone up some. Um, if you're taking them anyway with wizards, and you've got something with the five of amulet, it gives you a little bit extra protection there. So it's not bad. Um, but you'll see that a lot in some of the other armies where that's gonna get that's gonna get abused. Those armies that still have the old wording that don't have ward saves but have a, uh, some type of ability save, you're you're gonna see that abuse quite a bit, I think. Um, all right, um, other changes. Oh, this one this one is an interesting one. If a unit that receives redeploy command also receives unleash hell command in the same turn, can that unit shoot? No. So. Um, if, if you receive redeploy command and also receive unleash hell command in the same turn, can that unit shoot? So that kind of shuts off some of those, those abilities where, you, where you're looking to maximize those abilities that you have. It's kind of interesting in that, that you don't get to do that. You don't get to shoot if you do those. So, um, you know, skinks and fangs will be affected by that and some things. So. Um, if an ability allows a unit to receive a command without the command being issued and without a command point being spent, does the restriction that you cannot use the command ability more than once in the same phase still apply? Yes. So this hurts us if we have the um, Master of Star Ritual. It's um, the Skink command trait that lets you use the Skink Priest's command ability, which is plus one to hit until your next um, hero phase, um, without using a command point. Um, we used to be able to kind of kind of spread those those plus ones to hit around. Now we couldn't do that. There was a little bit of, of question of whether if you're not spinning the command point, does it count as as using that command ability? They've clarified here, basically, yes. You can't use that command ability more than once, even if you don't have to use a command point for it. So a good clarification. Um, 
I'm usually not taking that command trait all that often anymore. I used to take it a lot. You still will find it sometimes in Fangs if you just need to save the extra command point. But I, I end up going into something else now. Uh, there were a couple point changes. So let's look at the point changes. Dread Saurian. And I said couple point changes. There was one point change for us. <laughs> Dread Saurian went up to 545. So it's not a drastic increase. Um, you know, everything was looking at about 10, 10 point increase in from Age of Sigmar 2 to 3. And he didn't go up 10 points. And so um, it's not as bad as it could have been. The good, uh, it, and also Dread Sorn got a new War Scroll. Not a whole lot different, but some things that are very impactful. So the good is Dread Sorn doesn't bracket until 19 wounds have been suffered. So that's good. It used to bracket at 12, I believe, or once it got to 13, it would bracket. So this gives us an extra six wounds until it starts bracketing. Also kind of it basically lost that last bracket, so it doesn't, it never gets down to like uh, two damage for its jaws. Um so that's good overall. You're getting kind of to that same point where they really like these monsters to bracket at half um, health. I really wish they would update, you know, uh, the Stegodons to do that same thing. <laughs> that would be awesome instead of bracketing at three. Um, but it doesn't. So uh, Dread Soaring, good, good change on the on the bracket there. The bad though, this one really hurts. This one really hurts on a unit that was kind of already. You know, a uh, narrative unit. <laughs> Probably not the most competitive, but a lot of fun. Now we've lost some of its abilities. So it lost its ability, Roar to Ruin, Roar of Ruin, which halved the bravery of a unit in the Battle Shock phase. And that was great because it wasn't super killy, the Dread Saurian, but you could, you could do some bravery tricks. I mean, there's already a ton of ways to get around bravery. So why remove this? This wasn't game breaking. Most of the time, the enemy unit would just inspire him presence yet anyway, and so it wouldn't matter. And there was really no reason to get rid of this. Um, but they lost Roar to Ruin. The, the biggest change is it lost the totem keyword. Uh, I mean, granted, the totem keyword didn't really make sense on a big old giant dinosaur, but it gave it a great ability in Age of Sigmar 3 where you could use command, point, command points and abilities on itself and it had an 18-inch aura of using those command abilities if it needed to on somebody else. So this was a great ability for the Dread Saurian. Now it's lost its totem keyword. It can't use command points on itself. You're going to have to keep a hero around it to be able to use it. It's just... It's, it's going to be hard to use the Dread Saurian. It, it, can still, it can still soak up a lot of wounds. It still has 36, 35 wounds, 37 in Coalesced. Or Thunder Lizards. Um, and it, it can still be super tanky, but losing that totem keyword really hurts the uh, the Dread Sorin, I think. Um, one unit that <laughs> one unit that didn't get hurt was the mighty little ginger dwarf Gotrek. So no points increases for Gotrek. That's unbelievable, to be honest. It you know, it went down almost a hundred points in new Age of Sigmar and um, <laughs> I don't know why. So it should have at least gone up some. It didn't have to go all the way back up to where he was before, but probably some. This is great news if you like putting Gotrek in your army. I think you're going to see Gotrek at a lot of tournaments now. I, we've already been seeing him at quite a few around here. I've got a big tournament in, in Houston coming up next month. And I bet you there are going to be a lot of Gotreks there. It's I can't believe his points didn't increase at all. That's crazy. So, um, play him. Put him. Throw him in your army. He's he's worth the points. He will kill anything he touches. Um, but you also might want to have an answer for him in your list if you're going to a tournament. How can I deal with Gotrek? Or how can I avoid him? <laughs> All right. So uh, that's it for the FAQ. I think the Engine of the Gods gone up. A lot getting that pre priest keyword. Uh, he's almost an auto included in all my lists. Of course, I love Stegodons. Um, I think Gotrek is still a good play. I think Astralith Banner Bearer went up some. I think Dread Saurian went down some. Um, but overall, I'm I'm pretty happy with that. So, uh, since I don't play Dread Saurian, if I played Dread Saurian, I'd be pretty angry right now. But since I like Engine of the Gods, here we go. <laughs> all right, guys. Uh, let me know if I missed anything important for Seraphim, and I'll catch y'all later.